All right, another lesson on um, electrical and electronic engineering. Now, this session is about digital and analog, mainly digital and binary uh, circuits. So, so far, all the numbers that you've been dealing with has been decimal, uh, meaning it's, it's ranged from zero to nine. And these are the symbols, if you like, or uh, the values or digits, because because they were this decimal from zero to nine, that's 10 uh, numbers or 10 values, then we call them digits. Uh, now, in binary, you only have two options, two possibilities, either zero or one. Uh, in other words, either off or on. The states of a switch uh, that can be either on or off. So it can't be any, anything in between. There is no gray area in binary. There is no gray area in uh, digital circuits, basically. So it's zero for off or um, other words. There are other words for it. Low, for instance, they say low for zero or off uh, or just zero and one or on or high. These are the different terms that they use for zero and one and the numbers that you might have these are just some some uh, examples some samples of some you know binary numbers uh, you don't read this for instance 1010 you read this 1010 zero, zero. Uh, zero, 01 this is not 11 this is 11 one. this is not 1001 this is 1001 zero, zero, one. Uh, you just basically state it that way because there is no two, there is no three, there is no thousand. It's just either zero or one. Now, uh, if you remember in decimal or deanery, that's another term for it, deanery. Uh, if you had a value like this, uh, 97,352, this little 10 just indicates this is a base 10 number. That means it's a decimal number. Normally, we didn't use this. We never uh, had this next to any value because we knew all the system that we were using was just decimal or binary. Now, to uh, differentiate between decimal and binary, you might see that in uh, most of the documents, you'll see a base 10 there. That means that this is a base 10 system. And if you see other numbers here as a little value next to the uh, right corner of the main number or main value, then that is your base system. It could be eight, which would mean the, it's, it's the, the, the system is octal. If it's uh, 16, then it's hexadecimal. If it's two, it's binary. Now, we're not dealing with hexadecimal and octal in this session, but it's the same principle. It's the exact same principle. If you learn this one, then you know how to deal with octal or hexadecimal. But we're dealing with decimal and binary. So if you just uh, look back at, at this uh, basically value and just think how we did this in decimal, uh, we can replicate this in binary. We said 97,352 in base 10 was the same as saying 9, 000, 9 times 10 to the power of 4, which is 9 times 10,000, 90,000, plus 7 times 10 to the power of 3, or 7,000, plus 3 times 10 to the power of 2, or 300, plus 5 times 10, plus 2 times 10 to the power of 0, which is 1. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so 2 to the times one is two. Uh, why we did that? Well, because uh, two is it is on the uh, ones column. If you if you remember, you know, looking back, uh, so two is uh, the, the the power for this uh, digit is ten to the power of zero. So you start with the base system. So that's ten. This first digit will be ten to the power of zero. This is 10 to the power of 1, this is 10 to the power of 2, this is 10 to the power of 3, 
and 9 is 10 to the power of 4. So it's like 9 times 10 to the power of 4, 7 times 10 to the power of 3, 3 times 10 to the power of 2, 5 times 10 to the power of 1, 2 times 10 to the power of 0. Add them together, that is your value, which is 97,352. So if you haven't got any problem here, if you have a problem here, you need to repeat this <laughs> Uh, part of the video and watch it again to understand that. If you haven't got any any problem with this, then we can replicate this in any other base system. So if we just change uh, this to a different value like this, let's say, but let's just ignore these two uh, rows. Let's just start with this one first so that you understand better. So this value 101 one, in the base two, which is binary, so this two just indicates this is a base two system or binary system. You can say uh, the first digit on the right, the lowest digit, uh, which we also call it uh, least significant bit, LSB. And the uh, last digit on the left is the highest uh, value uh, or most significant bit, MSB. So this is LSB, low significant bit, and this is most significant bit. Now we don't call digit anymore, we call them bits. And that's where you get your memory bytes, uh, how many bytes of memory you have, because each bit is a memory, it's one value memory. And eight bits, eight bits is one byte so when you say you have two gigabytes then you know how many <laughs> thousands of these bits you have in your memory so all right uh, so the first bit the same as what we did in the uh, decimal we said this two was under the ones so it's times 10 to the power of one zero sorry 10 to the power of zero uh, and this one 10 to the power of 1. So here our base is 2, it's not 10, so we say this is on the 2 to the power of 0, this is on the 2 to the power of 1, and this most significant bit is on the 2 to the power of 1, uh, sorry, 2 to the power of 2. So 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2. Then you times them and you find the value in decimal so one times you could just you can start from this end it doesn't matter as, as long as you have them under the right powers uh, then you can add them together and find the right values so you say one times ten uh, to not not ten two to the power of two plus zero times two to the power of one plus one times two to the power of zero 1 times 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 0 times anything is 0, uh, so, and 1 times 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of any, anything to the power of 0 is 1, so 1 times 1 is 1, then 4 plus 1 is 5 in the system of decimal or deanery system. So 1, 0, 1 in binary is the same as 5 in decimal. That's what we're trying to say. You could go backward and do the same thing from decimal to binary, but uh, I'll show you a simpler way to convert from decimal to binary. This is binary to decimal. And so if I have another number here, uh, one zero in the base two or binary, we want to convert it to decimal. So uh, zero is uh, under the ones or uh, two to the power of zero and one is on the uh, two to the power of one so one times two to the power of one plus zero times two to the power of zero that's that's just zero so one times two is two two plus zero is two and two uh, in the base ten or decimal system is the same as one zero in binary system uh, one in the binary this uh, binary system, the base two is the same as one times two to the power of zero, 
and that's one uh, in the system 10, uh, system base 10 or de decimal. So one in binary is the same as one in decimal. One zero in binary is the same as two in decimal. One zero one is the same as five in decimal. Now, going backwards, if you have a value like 118 in decimal, in the base system 10, you want to convert it to binary. What we want to do here, we need to divide this because our base now go, is going to be 2, uh, converting it from 10 to 2. So we need to keep dividing this value by 2. If you wanted to convert this to octal, you would uh, keep dividing this value by 8. If you wanted to convert it to hexadecimal, you would divide it by 16. Uh, but like I said, we're just focusing on decimal and binary. So this is decimal, 118. Keep dividing it by 2 to convert it to binary. Keep dividing it by 2 and keep the note of your remainder. So you, you can't do it with the calculator. You have to actually know your so, uh, division. 118 divided by 2 is 59 with no remainder. Then 59 divided by 2 is 29 with one remainder. Uh, you could do it with calculator if it says like 29 point something, then, then you know you've got a one remainder. So they, again, you divide that, you, you take a note of that <coughs> remainder. 29 divided by 2 is 14 with a 1 remainder. 14 divided by 2 is 7 with no remainder. 7 divided by 2 is 3 with 1 remainder. 3 divided by 2 is 1 with 1 remainder. Now, most people have noticed they stop here. This is a big mistake. Don't stop here. This is not finished yet. You still have 1 remainder. So, because they just think we can't divide 1 by 2. Yes, you can. 1 divided by 2 is 0 with 1 remainder. So don't forget, you have to get to 0. You have to, on the division part, you have to get 0 with whatever remainder here. 1 or 0. Now, these are your remainders. We disregard or ignore all the division answers here. We want to focus on the remainder. That is why we kept a note of them. Now, if you write the remainder from the bottom to the top, from left to right, that is your value in binary. So 118 in decimal is the same as 1110110 in binary. So we write it 1110110 this way from uh, Starting from the bottom to the top. Don't start from the top to the bottom. And start from the bottom to the top and left to right. So left to right. One 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 zero one one zero. That is your hundred eighteen decimal in binary system. Yeah, that is your. Um, that is what you need for conversion between binary and decimal and decimal to binary. So uh, again, um, if you wanted to convert that from, if you wanted to convert this one, sorry. Now, if you wanted to convert this value to decimal, then you would say zero times two to the power of zero, which is zero, plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1, which is 2, plus 1 times 2 to the power of, uh, sorry, 1 times 2 to the power of 1, which is 2, okay, uh, sorry. So if you want to now convert this value back to decimal to see if you get 118, that's the test. You, you can test your answer to see if you got it right. Uh, you, you do the uh, the opposite, converting from binary to decimal, like we said before. So this would be 0 times 2 to the power of 0, which is 0. 1 times 2 to the power of 1, that would be 2. Plus 1 times 2 to the power of 2, that's 4. So 4 plus 2, that's 6. Plus 
this is going to be 0 times 2 to the power of 3, that's 0. Uh, 1 times 2 to the power of 4, 1 times 2 to the power of 5, 1 times 2 to the power of 6. Add them all together, it should give you 118. If it doesn't, then you've got it wrong somewhere. You can also add and subtract and multiply and divide binary numbers. I'm just going to show you a little example of addition. Um, in, in, in decimal, it was simple. 5 plus 5 was 10, 7 plus 7 plus 9 was 16, and, and so on. Now, uh, if you have a value like this one, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and you want to add uh, to that 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, then uh, you add it this way. 1 plus 1 is because you, you you are dealing in binary system, you don't have two. So the same as decimal, when you didn't have two, uh, five plus five would be a zero here and a carry over to the other side, ten, uh, to the tens. So one plus one, because it's two, basically two in decimal, um, but in in binary you don't have two, so you have a carry over one here on the next column. So one and one will give you zero with a carryover one here. Again, you have one and one here. It gives you zero with a carryover one. Now you have one and one, which gives you zero with a carryover, and this one will just drop down here. Or you could say this one and this one is zero with a one carryover to the next column, and this one will just drop down here. And then 1 and 1, again, uh, 0 with a 1 carryover. 1 and 1, 0 with a 1 carryover. There's nothing down here. It just drops down here. So this is your value. This is how you add. Right, now in binary, uh, we have uh, things called logic gates. Logic gates uh, are devices, whether they're electronic or electrical or mechanical, it doesn't matter. Uh, basically, they're devices that they take the information from the input and on the basis of the states of the input, they give you an output. And they're set. They, those things are set depending on the conditions of the input or states of the input. What that means is, so you have certain logic gates with these symbols. As far as where these logic gates are and what they are, uh, because we're dealing in electronic world now, um, I know you can have digital gates in mechanical uh, world as well, mechanical engineering, but we're just dealing with the, in, in electronic world, you have chips or integrated circuits, things like this. Uh, inside them, you have quite a few number number of gates or logic gates basically or binary uh, gates this symbol the first one on the left is an AND gate this is a NOR gate this is a NOT gate now these are just some examples of them I'll go through uh, some Im important ones and explain them how they are. Uh, there's two different uh, ways of showing or indicating these gates. Either traditional symbols, we call them American National Standard or ANSI uh, symbols. This is what we deal with mainly. Uh, and there is also International Electrotechnical Commission symbols or IEC symbols. Um, this, is, this is mainly British. However, uh, we are in Britain, but you will see in most documents, these are used. So it's good to know both of them, especially if you live in England. Then this is your symbols. You, you need to be familiar with them, like this is AND, and you might see it this way. This is NOR, you might see it that way. And this is not, you might see it that way, that way. However, like I said, in most uh, documents, you'll see it this way. Uh, American 
standard or ANSI. Every gate has its own truth table. The truth table indicates whether or not you, you have a one or zero on the output depending on the, the stats of input. So for instance, this is a NOT gate, and this is your symbol, traditional symbol, this is IEC symbol, and uh, if you give a zero to this NOT gate, it's just basically an inverter. It just inverts whatever you give it. If you give it one, it turns it to zero. If you give it zero, it turns it to one. So you have only two options for the one input. You have one input. This is uh, one of the rare gates that only have one input. Most gates have two, at least two inputs or more. So this is a NOT gate or inverter. So it inverts zero. If you if your stats for the input, you have input A stats either 0 to 1, alternating either 0 or 1, and the output is, if it's 0, output is 1, if it's 1, output is 0. And, and usually, output is shown by Q. You might see other forms, other letters um, sh indicated as your output, but this is a standard for input, they use alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, and all that but Q is usually used for output. You might get O for output, it doesn't matter. The next gate is an AND gate, and this is the symbol. Again, this is the British symbol for it, and the truth table. Now, to write the truth table, this is, this is how you, uh, you'll see the pattern. There's a pattern here. Uh, you always have to input, so, you need two columns for the inputs, input A, input B. And then you have a column for the output, Q. Now, input A and input B, if you notice the stats changing, these are the conditions, the, the, these are the possibilities that you may have in between these two inputs. You, ha you can have A0, B0, A off, B on, A on, B off, a on and B on. Uh, to memorize this, what I would say is you just start from the right uh, column input and say 0, 1, 0, 1. Because you have two inputs, you only go 2 to the power of 2 because you have two inputs and the base is 2. So 2 to the power of 2, the power is the number of inputs. 2 to the power of 2 is 4, so you go 4 rows. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then if you had three inputs, you would be uh, having two to the power of three rows. That would mean eight. So you have uh, four inputs, uh, sorry, two inputs, you have four rows. If you had three inputs, you would be having here uh, eight rows of zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And then the next column is two zeros, two ones. This is set. It never changes. If you keep it this way, then you can find the output easier. So for this, uh, and your output is only on when both of them are on. The rest of the conditions is off. Uh, and gate operates the same as two switches in series. So you have to have basically both switches on to have an output. The next gate is a NAND gate. NAND is opposite to AND. Um, same as what we'll see OR, or AND NOR. So AND and NAND, uh, the only difference in the symbol is this little bubble, this is this little cir circle at the end of the outputs. In both sim symbols, you have that. That is uh, the inverter that we had at the beginning, this inverter. Uh, instead of drawing the whole full symbol, uh, like a diode and a circle here, they just put that little circle there to indicate this is not an AND, this is an AND. So the truth table will be opposite to AND. 
and was all zero. The conditions are the same, as you can see. Uh, 0, 1, 0, 1 for B, and zero, two, two zeros, two ones for A. So this is set, uh, because you only have two inputs, and you have four rows, and, and these are the conditions. For output, uh, for AND, you had three zeros, one only when A and B were on. Now, here you have opposite. When both of them are on, the output is zero. All the rest of the conditions is one. Next gate is OR gate, and that is the symbol for it, American, and this is the British standard uh, system. Um, you can see there's a curve here, a crescent, that just indicates it's not an AND. If you want straight, it would be AND. This is uh, an OR gate. And the conditions again, the same uh, for the A and B inputs, the same, 0, 1, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1. Uh, but the output is different. Uh, the, the way it determines the output is, is like the same as having two switches in parallel. That means if you have a switch for uh, a switch called A and switch B, uh, if either one of them are on, you have an output. If both of them are on, you still have an output. You only don't have an output uh, if um, both of them are off. So if both of them are off, you have no output. If one of them is on, like this in this case, B is on, A is off, then you have an output. A is on, B is off, you have an output. Both of them are on, then you have an output. So that's the condition. You just remember two switches in parallel connection. So this is a NOR gate. It's exactly the same as OR, apart from uh, the fact that you have a little circle or bubble at the output. That means it's a NOR gate. And the truth table, like I said, uh, for the A and B conditions or the stats are exactly the same as anything else. And the output is opposite to OR. One zero zero zero. Another uh, important gate is exclusive OR or XOR. Uh, the difference between this and OR is in, in symbol is just this uh, second crescent here. Uh, and as far as the British symbol, it's just you have equal one, whereas here you had greater or equal one. So, uh, as far as the truth table, the difference between this and OR is that uh, we said the conditions are the same. The conditions of A and B inputs are the same as before, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 1, 1. Uh, but the output, we said for OR, we said if one or the other input is on, then the output is on. But if both of them were on, the output was still on. But in this case, the exclusive OR it excludes that one. If both of them are on, it doesn't give you a, uh, an output. So 0, 1, 1, this part is the same as OR, but the last bit is not the same, it's 0. That's the only difference between exclusive OR and OR. Next one is exclusive NOR, and, and that is this symbol with a bubble, again, same as exclusive OR with a um, circle, a little circle at the end, at the output, uh, and again, the output, the inputs are the same stats, exact same thing, the output is uh, opposite to Ex exclusive OR. Exclusive OR had 0 here, 1, 1, and 0 at the end, but here you have 1, 0, 0, 1. So you have to know one of them to invert it to get the NOR type of that gate. Or, or not inverting type of that gate. As for instance, if it's OR, then NOR would be opposite. If it's AND, NAND would be opposite. 
If you have a combinational circuits, uh, digital circuits like this, uh, logic gates, a few of them together, and you want to find the truth table of the output, first of all, you name the inputs A, B, C, and the output is Q, and you write the columns here A, B, C, and the output is Q, but in between the output and inputs, you might have other output, other little outputs. Uh, then you name those as well. And then you write the conditions of A, B, C, which is set, like I said, uh, A, B, C. You start from the uh, least significant bit, that is C here, and you keep alternating from 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. How far do you go? You go depending on the number of inputs. So you have three inputs here. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 rows of the information of inputs or stats of input. And B, the second row, the second column is two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones. The third one is four zeros, four ones. Again, how do you determine that? Because again, we're going by the number of twos. That was two to the power of zero. That means one. So you alternate every one bit. This is two to the power of one. That's every two. That's two. So every two bits you alternate. And this is two to the power of two. That's four. So you alternate every four. If you had another out, uh, another input, you it would be uh, two to the power of five, and so that would be sixteen. Every sixteen, you would alternate for that one. Then for D, uh, so you can't jump suddenly and write the truth table for Q for output. You, you can. Some people do that, but it's it's wrong and. Uh, you're prone to make mistakes. Uh, so what you do, you find the little outputs here of each gate and name other columns in between the main inputs and the outputs. So you have D and E in this case. For D, uh, the gate between, it's a gate between A and B and, and, and the gate is a NOR gate. So Depending on the gate that you have here, if you go back to the gates, that, the truth table for those gates, so all you have to do for this column, for D, you ignore C, you only look at the uh, A and B inputs and write the truth table for that. Uh, so if they are NOR, that means it's opposite to OR, and if you have 0, 0, then it's 1. 0, 0, it's 1. 0, 1, Again, it's zero, and if it's zero, one, it's zero. If it's one, zero, it's zero. It, this, this is all to do with going back to remembering the gates that we uh, introduced here. So this is how it was. Uh, this is OR, and this is a NOR gate. Uh, so NOR is you only get one when both of them are zero. In other conditions, you get zero. So going back to uh, our combinational gate, so in this case, D is only giving you one when you have A and B, both of them zero. So D is only one when both of them are zero. These two, this, this, in, this col in this row, you have zero, zero. So you have a one here, zero, zero. Then you have a one here. Other conditions, you always have one on either one or uh, either A or B, so the rest will be zero. So that uh, easy, the easiest way would be just determine where you will get one. The rest you just put zeros and the zeros there. E is an AND gate between B and C. So again, this in this case for writing E, the column E, you need to ignore A because A is irrelevant for this gate. The stats of A doesn't change the stats of E. What determines E is B and C. So you have to consider column B and C, uh, where both of them are on, like here, in this column, then your E is one. And then you go down to this last column, both of them are on, then you get a one on the output. The rest, you just enter zeros.
Now Q is an OR gate between D and E. So what did OR say? OR, or gate said, if you have one on either one of these inputs, then you have an output one. So we need to find the, the ones that you have one on either D or E. Again, ignore A, B, C now. What determines Q is D and E, or you could say D or E. Uh, D is one, you get a one. D is one, you get a one. Uh, this is both zero, you get zero. E is one, you get one. Zero, 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 zero. Both D and E are zero, then you get zero. D is zero, A, E is one, then you get a one. So you could just find the ones uh, that you have one either on D or E. If you have one on either of those, then you get a one on the output. Other than that, it will be zero. That's how you determine the combinational gate uh, output. Now, if we consider a Boolean expression, this is called a Boolean expression of a logic gate or logic circuit, not logic gate, logic circuit. Uh, the output is written as Q equals A. Now, the way you read these uh, Boolean expressions, it's not like A times B plus C times D. In brackets don't read it that way there is no times there is no um, plus uh, plus means or uh, it's an or gate and for and for and gates they just put times or or dot you could have a dot here or you can have nothing like like this you have a dot there uh, meaning and or you could just have nothing in between letters that means still and an AND gate. So if we say that the output of these, the, a, a circuit, output of a circuit or a logic circuit is Q equals A and B or C and D. This is how you read it. A or, sorry, Q equals A and B or C and D. If it was a NOT gate, uh, if it was, for instance, A and NOT B, uh, then there would be a bar on top of B, or you could just put a prime on top of it, say NOT B, that means NOT B. Well, we don't, we don't have that in this case. We just say, in this case, in this example, for instance, I have an ex a, a Boolean expression which says the output is A and B or C and D. Now we want to draw a logic circuit for this. Your logic circuit hasn't been given. You have only this Boolean expression. You want to build the circuit out of this. My suggestion would be you start from the, the smallest gate that you have in between the letters, between the inputs. How many inputs we have here? So, well, Q is your output, so this uh, final LED, we put an LED here as an output, and the inputs is A, B, C, D, so you have four inputs. We put four switches in a, in a circuit that are connected to a 5 volt DC, VCC, and 5 volt DC uh, usually is one or high in, in binary circuits. So you have a, um, and I've named these switches A, B, C, D. Ignore the stats of these switches. They could be on or off. They could be any in any um, condition. At the moment, it's all, it should be all open, really. Uh, then you have four inputs, A, B, C, D. And between C and D, I can see here, there is an AND, because C and D says. So I can just put between C and D an AND gate. This is how you build the circuit. You start from the smallest uh, gate that you can, you can build. 
You can start from here, right? Just go through it from left to right. A, a and a combinational gate between B, C, D. But it would be a little bit complicated and you are again prone to make mistakes. So I'll just start with the, the internal values or internal uh, inputs of this combinational gates, then go out from from the out from the inside out basically. So C and D that is C and D an AND gate. And there is an OR, this plus means OR between C and D, which is this, this output is C and D, or B. So there is an OR gate here between this output of this gate and B input. So this is an OR gate. And then between this output, which is the whole bracket, which is the combinational circuit, this combinational circuit, this, these two uh, together gives this output. Between this and A, there is an AND gate because there is no sign or, or there is a dot there. That, that means an AND gate again. So we put another AND between this and A. And the output is your output, which can be shown as it can be connected to an LED or you could, it could be connected to a lamp, a five volt lamp, maybe. To turn it on and off. So this is your logic circuit. And this is how you basically explain how you've done it. You've, you've started from C and D and you've seen there is, a, there is an OR gate between C and D and B. So you put an OR gate and then between that output, which is the whole bracket, and A, there is an another, there is another AND gate. And that's how you make that. Now, to write the truth table, again, you consider the number of inputs. You have four inputs. So 2 to the power of 4 is 16 because the base is 2 and you have four inputs. The binary system is base 2 and the number of inputs are four, so two to the power of four is 16. And so we drew a table, which, we, which, has, which has got 16 rows, uh, regardless of this one, that I'm just naming them, the inputs and outputs. So uh, you have four inputs, A, B, C, D, and then the output is A and B or C and D, but in between, we have these two outputs as well, which we which have named this one C and D, which is what it is, and this one is B or C and D. B or C and D, which gives you this output. So to write that now, uh, again, uh, you, you start with these names and inputs and outputs, and then you, you have 16. Uh, rows because you have two to the power of four inputs and then you start from the last input a b c d and uh, for this one uh, like i said the stats would be zero one zero one Z sorry zero one Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. I will keep doing that. Okay, so we've done this alternating 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Why? Because again, it's 2 to the power of 0. And uh, that's every one bit. The, this one is two zeros, two ones. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy and paste. Okay. And then for this one, you have 
four zeros, because two to the power of three, two to the power of one is two, two to the power of two is four. Four zeros, four ones. And again, if you copy that. And you have that. And then for the last one, uh, two to the power of zero, one, two, three. Two to the power of three. is eight. So you have eight zeros. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And that one. And then eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, these are conditions, these are set. And so regardless of any circuit that the, the way your circuit is set up, it doesn't matter. Your input conditions are that it can't be any anything outside these conditions. With C, D, C, and D, you have that AND gate between them. So C and D output this this output here for this one, or at this point, your output is only one when C and D both of them are on. Now you have to look at these two and see where you have both of them one. You only have both of them one here, and you put a one here, and you have a one here, and you have a one here. So you have you set your outputs. Oh, you have another one here. These two are on, so you have this condition. So now uh, the rest will be all zero. So zero, 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 zero. That's how you build. And now the the output between C and D, which is uh, this basically, or here at this point in the circuit. This, this point, uh, there is an OR gate between this and B. So now we need to consider this column and B. So we, we highlight basically this. Uh, you highlight in your head really, not, not like, like I'm doing. It's just because I'm trying to show you. So we want to see uh, the output here, how, what, what is going to be an OR gate between this and that, basically, these, these gray ones and these. The condition, because it's an OR gate, your output here would be only one when you have either one of these one. So uh, up to here, you have both of them zero, 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 zero. So until you get to this, then you have CD and B. CD1, and then you put a 1 there. And then you go down, the next one, B is 1, and this is 0, so you get a 1. B is 1, you get a 1. B is 1, you get a 1. Again, you keep going, these, these are zeros, both of them. You don't get anything until you get here. Uh, CD is 1, you get a 1 here. And you have 1s here all the way, uh, and then you get 1s here. So we start here <coughs> with this. And that's the one. And that is the one. And again, B is one here. And that's one. Uh, B is one here. Again, one. And then uh, B is one again. So uh, you have 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you have C, C, D here, one, and uh, this one is going to be zero because C, D is zero and B is zero. The same here, B is zero, C, D is zero, so it's zero again, and that's zero, B is zero, so again zero, and for this one, C, D is one, so you're going to get a one here, the rest if you notice one, uh, B is all one all the way, so you can get one, 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 one. And, and D is going to be zero. So we've done that. Now, the last one, which is your final output here, is an AND gate between this, which was that bracket that we made inside the bracket B or C and D, and A, and A. So <clears throat> there's an AND gate between A, this column, this column, there's an AND gate between that and this. So that means you only get an output one here when both of these columns are one. So you don't have both of them on up to here. This is all zero. So you're not going to get any ones up to here anyway. Um, to this row, you're not going to get, although this, these are one, uh, one zero changing, but this has always been zero up to here. From here onward, you have to see where you get uh, both of them one. Uh, here you have one, but there you have zero. You have one here, but zero there. One here zero here, so you don't get anything until you get to this row. Uh, from here onwards, both of them, uh, columns A and B or C and D here are both on, so you get one, 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 one. The rest are all zero. So zero, 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 zero. That's your output truth table. And that's truth table done for this circuit. As simple as that. Now, we want to actually test now to see if this, uh, this is true. We got it right. So, uh, if we go to Multisim, I've built this circuit here. Yeah. And uh, we put these switches A, B, C, D, which can alternate with actual letters with the keyboards A, B, and C, D, and get different stats done. So you can actually replicate all this truth table, all these conditions, and find all these outputs. Well, I'm not going to do all that because it's just going to be hours of doing that. But what I'm going to do is showing you if you get any of these um, outputs, some of these outputs just to show you when you get an output, when you get the final output, not the, the rest of them. So in this case, you have to have a um, has to be on always, and so A has to be always on. And B, C, D alternates, and, and you get these. And let's have a look. So, if I simulate this at the moment, because A is off, so it's out, the output is off. If I turn it on, still off. Uh, that's one condition. Next condition, A, B, uh, both of them are on, and C and D off. You have an output. Let's have a look. Um, A and B are on, C and D is off, and you have an output. So it's true. So I've got that one right. What about A is on, B is off, C and D is on? You have to get an output. So let's 
turn this off and turn CMD on. Yes, it's true. So that's again, that's that column. So I've done two columns tested. And the next one, the third one is when you have D on A, B and D on. So A, B and D on is true again. And so, yeah, and that's another term to use true or false. Uh, so output is true for that one. And uh, so now to, for this one, we need A, B, C on, D zero or off or false. So A, B, C is true, D is off, is on, and that's true, the, the value is true. And also uh, the last one, A, B, C, D, all of them on, and the true, the output is true, the same, it's true. You can see that. Now, as soon as I turn A off, it goes off. So that is your truth table tested.